Performance evaluation of healthcare systems using data development analysis. My name is Viridiana. I'm going to talk for both Saida and me. We're both from School of Engineering of National Autonomous University of Mexico. And this is the visual abstract of what this article is going to be. Having four inputs put to our analysis tool that is going to be output oriented, why reveal return to scale that development analysis, we're going to get four outputs, four variables, from which one we're going to take uh, an, a discussion of how is the efficiency, how is the context of 39 countries, particularly of their healthcare systems. So uh, this is the reading and reported abstract of this article. Um, you can see that efficient and super efficient systems are identified and Mexico's systems w will be discussed as an example. So, um, healthcare is an essential priority to any society and we'll, we're seeing this in our face, in our day by day. So, uh, this performance analysis of a healthcare system Will, it will be the very important tool to identify the most important improvements so we can reach certain objectives that could be particular or uh, something such as the World Health Organization's Sustainable Development Goals. So in any organization, each and every activity is aimed to increase the value of an entry. If I have something, I want to do the best of it. I want to invest my time so I can get something better in re return. So uh, what does literature say about that development and health? Uh, first of all, the measurement of efficiency is fundamental in health systems. It was found in a systematic review uh, that in, in 137 papers, most of them would use that development analysis for measuring efficiency in health systems in particular. So it's been applied to analyze international health systems in the European Union, Asia, Africa, this red group, national systems comparison. It was applied to United States of America and China. Also, in this context of COVID-19 pandemics, uh, it, it's been widely used to, uh, to get information of how, we're, well, how an organization is performing. So getting information such as medical personnel, uh, hospital beds, COVID-19 tests, cases affect to recover the debt. From all that, we can get a lot of information, very important, so we can know how we're doing and how we could be better. So, in this case, this paper presents a comparison of the efficiency of international health systems with a special focus on a country on the Ameri of the American continent. So, that employment analysis, we've mentioned it uh, a lot. But first of all, what is it? It's a benchmarking model to compare similar activities. It takes the inputs and the outputs of each entity. That entity will be something that I'm, I'm gonna analyze. And both could be multiple. As my activity uh, is, I can choose whatever inputs and whatever outputs I need. Here are the things to describe that phenomenon. And that entity, let's call it decision-making unit. And the observations that will be, uh, and observations will be compounded by uh, this, the inputs and the outputs, both of them. Um, now, by applying linear programming, the best for performance possible of each DMU is going to be determined and compare that result. 
Now, uh, how about the data and an envelope? Uh, first of all, a frontier of good practices will be defined empirically. The best set of inputs are to generate the best set of outputs. And in a way then, that inefficient DMUs will be one side surrounded by the frontier. Here the frontier could be, uh, well, first, let's imagine that that frontier ideally will be this curve. So we could get a, a first approach to that with a line or we can make it better by um, uh, connecting some dots. That connection is the variable return to school. It's, it's a better approach to the other one. And note that in the ideal frontier, uh, each and every efficient DMU is located, while here um, a non-efficient DMU will not be in that frontier of good practices. So uh, we're going to talk about three models. The first one will be the additive BRS. It optimizes the efficiency, which could be either theta or phi, ideally that efficiency could be equal to one. And we can either minimize inputs, minimize the quantity of resources and, that I'm gonna use, or maximize outputs, maximize what I can do. An approach will be chosen. So I'm gonna fix the other part, the complement. So we're gonna have the input orientation where the question will be how shall I minimize the inputs to achieve a certain outputs? What do I need so I can do this something? Or output oriented. How shall I maximize the output if I'm to use these inputs? What? How can I do the best if this is what I have? Note the values of, of the efficiency uh, that we would have in each case for input will be less or equal to one for output will be greater or equal to one so this is a primal model of this linear programming formulation here is the, mo the model uh, in in the left we have the input oriented on the right the output oriented here the thing is um, that in input, where we want to minimize, and outputs, we ha we want to maximize. And the, here is something important, and that we're gonna talk about later. That is this lambda value that is going to be the level of service uh, achievable by a certain DMU. So this model has to be executed n times, so I can step on a specific DMU so I can sweep each and every of them and I can compare the values obtained. So now is the multiplicative model. It determines the importance or weight of each observation so I can have a, a, a feedback. Did I choose a meaningful observations? Should I take out some? Should I add some more variables? And this is the dual model of the linear programming problem. So if I solve the other one, I'm gonna take this information. Here's the formulation where letter V is for uh, uh, the weight of the, the input and letter U is for the outputs. Now is the part of the slacks. Well, yeah, uh, with additive uh, VRS model, we found the efficient DMUs. However, there of those efficient DMUs, still they are some that uh, they are the best, right? So we have to know which ones are they. Uh, this is found by determining the tolerances, the slacks, 
that are how, how much can I adjust an input or an output, but only itself, only one of them. Note that the input has um, this notation with the minus, uh, sign, minus sign and the output with this plus. Uh, and the target of both models for input and output orientations um, is to maximize this value. So um, here the thing is that if the efficiency is equal to one and the, and the slacks found are equal to zero, then that DMU is super efficient. Now, what did we do for uh, the performance evaluation of healthcare systems? Well, first method. The data processing was done through an unwritten R script. It was based on some other that already existed. The code used uses the package LP solve for every DMU, so it is in a for loop that will execute LP solve n times. And the script results were also verified with the R package VR. Now, the considerations have was uh, the output oriented VRS. We fixed the resources had, we want to do the best with, with those resources. 39 countries were studied for inputs, for outputs, and the most re recently reported data is considered between 2016 and 2019. So, um, health key KUSD is for health expenditure in thousand dollars per capita. We used also the hospital beds per thousand people, the number of phys physicians per thousand people, the number of, nurse of nurses and midwives per thousand people. And as outputs, we used the life expectancy at birth, the diseases that per thousand note that those are from communicable and non-communicable deaths. Um, MCCDR is for mortality from cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, or chronic respiratory diseases as a percentage. And the percentage of diabetes prevalence. All, all of this uh, information was obtained from the World Data Bank. So this is the, the a, a part of the data set built. Note, here is the country. Uh, the country name. Uh, here are the inputs and those for uh, here are the outputs. Note that some of them of them have a, a minus sign. Why? Because that emblem and analysis models that we saw are to maximize outputs. But we don't want to maximize the disease death, mortality and diabetes. So we give it a minus sign, so we say that we want to minimize that, is, that value. So the results, we found some tables, here you can see them. Uh, first are the super efficient healthcare systems. These had efficient, efficiency equal to one, and all of the slacks were equal to zero. So if they, they want to do better, um, they should look at these values and take that into account. Or also, if they're starting to uh, getting bad at, at, at something, they should be aware of the importance of, of each, each observation and be very conscious of on, on how it would um, impact on their performance. So now in the inefficient healthcare systems case, here we have something where we can see the DMU that we're gonna have, the efficiency found for it, 
the 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 sum of these legs, the benchmark, the the reference, so they so that country can make uh, an improvement as soon as possible, and a factor that say that says how um, how important how relevant that benchmark is for each case. So we have the same, um, this is for America's, uh, America's country healthcare systems. Here, here are the, the rest. This is the part, the table part one of two. Here is the part two. Um, also the weights for inefficient countries, this is the, the similar to, to the first table that we saw, but here the thing would be that since these countries are not being efficient, well, then they would have to improve these things so they can do better. So, the conclusion of all that data found. The Nambalan Banana Analysis includes the context to determine the performance, it gives a size relative comparison. It doesn't matter if that, that the dim view that we are getting is huge or is really little, it will be relative. It gives a feedback uh, with the weights displayed so we can make changes. As an example, we can say about Mexico that it is confirmed that non, not privileged position, it, it, its efficiency was not one, the slugs were not zero. Um, because of the non-zero benchmark values, the lambdas, it might be feasible to increase Mexico's attention to the healthcare systems of Ecuador, Paraguay and United Arab Emirates. And due to the non-zero weights obtained, we can say that health expenditure and beds per thousand people could be enhanced. And that improvement would, would be seen in the life expectancy at birth in a very noticeable way. And these kind of inferences can be made for any country included in this analysis. Now the discussion. This analysis may be more robust as more indicators are considered. But representative results could be extracted as the data is more recent. In future analysis, not only could more countries be added, but it could also be possible to take into account more observation uh, related to whole sustainable development goals that we mentioned in the introduction, uh, such as the quality of the services given to all economic strata or the total of population health covered. Well, now the acknowledgement, this research has been funded by National Autonomous University of Mexico as a project, Optimización en la Logística Hospitalaria, and here are the references. And thank you so much for your attention.